This morning, I, I noticed that it's uh, around about 12 minutes past uh, 10, so we have only a few moments together this morning, and, and I don't have a, 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 a deeply a theological treatise to share, but I have a heart to share a word of encouragement. You know, uh, we live in a day where many people uh, are finding, I talk to many people and they say, well, you know, yes, I believe in God, but I don't believe in the church. I don't believe in uh, the necessity for fellowship with others. I can, I can get all that I need off the internet. And, um, and I feel my heart is saddened because there's something you don't get by watching the internet. You don't get the opportunity for you to share with others around about you. You're sitting in your lounge room or uh, in the car or wherever you are, uh, googling away happily. Uh, a question was um, posed, um, how do we walk in a church? How do we walk into your church? And uh, a pastor by the name of Ray Ewers um, actually gave some instruction about how to walk into church. And, I, and I, I've extended his concept a little more because it's how do we prepare to walk into church? You know, how do we prepare for what happens when we get to church? He said, pray about where you sit. Pray about where you sit. And, uh, and I'm not having a shot at anybody this morning, but I'm, I'm noting that vastly everybody sits in exactly the same place they sat last week and they don't need to pray about it. Now some people have really good reasons for doing that, you know. Uh, I remember a lady friend of mine used to say to me, she always sat in the front so that she didn't get distracted from all the people who were behind her. And she could pay attention much more easily. That sounds like a legitimate reason to sit where one sit. But we sit with our friends. To, to uh, ask the question, do you pray about where you sit, it seems a rather basic assumption requiring little prayer. Perhaps a family with five toddlers would appreciate some advice on where best to sit. But most of us never really give it a thought. Pray about where we sit. Praying seems to be a great way to walk into church. It's, it's better than grumbling about a full car or a disagreement with your spouse on the way to church or feeling annoyed that uh, the first hymn was uh, sung, uh, it wasn't a hymn out of the hymn book, it was only a chorus. You know, there are lots of things that we can be thinking about when we come to church. Of all the things to pray about, why should I be concerned about my seating position? I sit here every week. But it's a bigger question, really. It's what's the church? That's really the bigger question. How do we do church. You know, 20, probably 20 years ago now, that became a bit of a catchphrase where churches were asking the question, how do we do church? And, um, uh, you know, there are different formats of church, different patterns, different uh, singing, different um, orders of service. You see, it's a good question though. What is the church? What is the benefit of us being here week by week? What is the church? I've listed just a few things what I believe the church is. Of course it uh, comes from a word ecclesia which is the gathering together. It's a the gathering together of a company of people with like mind and with like heart, yes, uh, but for other reasons too. I, I put this one in because this was Ray Ewer's big point. Church is a place where Christians go to work. Did you come to work this morning? We didn't think, we didn't, I didn't think about that. Probably as a pastor I could probably think about it more as a place I go to work than, than most people do. Uh, but, but what Ray Ewers is actually talking about here is he's actually speaking about whether we come to church to be givers or to be receivers. Or both. Yes, church is a place where Christians go to work. That's probably a good reason why we should pray about it before we come. It's a gathering of God's people to worship God together. 
You know, it's, uh, we can worship God and we are to worship God wherever we are. You know, if we're out in the field working, if we're in the garden, if we're uh, shopping, you know, it all, everything, all of our life should be an act of worship. But we come to hear God's word and to respond to that word in faith and obedience. And Ray Ewers says that we should pray as we come to church. I wonder whether we did that this morning. You know, the lovely thing about living not on the island, living half an hour away from church, is that I get 30 minutes every Sunday, not that I don't pray at other times, but I've got a 30-minute little window <laughs> where I can just talk to God about what's going to happen this morning, that God would prepare my heart and prepare your hearts uh, for what God's wanting to say to us today. Do we come with a heart that says, we want to hear God's word, but we also want to respond to God's word. That it should make a difference. You know, our being here this morning should be a source of encouragement that changes things as we walk out of here and into the world where we've been called to serve. The church is a place where we fellowship with each other through the blood of Jesus. How appropriate this morning. And because of our fellowship, we seek to serve one another. I noticed the song that uh, Gavin chose, you know, we're to weep with those who weep, you know, to really support each other, to fellowship with each other. This is a place, a special place to be. It's a place where we use our gifts and abilities to strengthen one another and to build Christ's church. I wonder whether we understand that. It's a, it's a source of great encouragement, actually. I know that every believer in this chapel this morning has been given at least one gift from God. One gift from God that the Bible says is not just for you, it's for everyone, it's for the benefit of all. And uh, that verse that we read earlier on, uh, encourage one another, building one another up in the faith, is, uh, is to be the goal as we relate to each other. And I noticed again in the song that we've just sung that actually it is as, as we love one another, our love for Christ is expressed. Encourage one another. Edification. To build one another up. That's the word that is so often used to describe what is to go on in the church. All believers, not just the, the minister, not just the leaders, but every believer, not just the members. Every believer is to be involved in this ministry of edification, this ministry of encouraging one another. I uh, uh, have a little study that I do every now and again. I pick up the word one another. And I think from memory there are at least 13 references in the Bible where we are to do things for one another, where to pray for one another, where to encourage one another, where to support one another, where to bless one another. These one another's... Uh, Help me to understand that it's not about me, it's about, it's about us, together. It's about you. It's about the person next to you. In fact, it's about the person you don't get on with as much as anyone else. This word, edification, 1 Thessalonians 5.11, Therefore, comfort one another and edify one another, just as you are also doing. Build one another up is what the scriptures are talking about. The New Testament consistently teaches that for the body of Christ to grow, each part must do its part. And as I said a few moments ago, every one of us have been given some special <coughs> gifts, some more than one gift, some perhaps many gifts, but not every, not, no one has all of them. <laughs> we need each other. We need that ministry that comes one to the other, this ministry of encouragement edification, building one another up. Do you know it's interesting that in the New Testament there are only four places where the gifts are mentioned. And it's easy to remember. Um, I don't normally remember them in the order that I've put them on the screen there. But it's Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12, same chapter, different book. And Ephesians 4 and 1 Peter 4. They're the four places where the gifts are given specific attention specific mention. 
And, uh, and as we go through that, I'm just going to show you uh, a passage in a moment that helps us to understand that what the Apostle Paul is talking about is that the church is a body, it's a family, it's a body with many parts. Some parts we think are more important than others, but Paul says, no, every part is necessary. Every part is necessary to build up the body. We're to view ourselves as servants, not only of God, but also of God's people. A people eager to meet the needs of others, even if it means sacrificing our own. Putting ourselves out for the benefit of others. Here it is, Romans chapter 12. This is the one we're going to look at, the first one. We might get to another one in a week or so's time. But here today, we're looking at this. We know uh, the first two verses by heart. Probably not in the words that are there, because I've taken this from a paraphrase. But we would know Romans 12, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable act of worship. Verse two, and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable sacrifice, an act of worship. We know it. I like the way it was said here. Don't copy the behaviour and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. We'll learn how to know God's will for us, that which is good and pleasing and perfect. And then he moves on into this thing about the body. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Measure yourself by the faith that God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body, so it is with the church. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In this grace God has given us different gifts according to certain things well, to do certain <coughs> things well. So if God has given you authority to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take that responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection. And take delight in honouring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Boy, what a list of things are there. Did you see yourself in any of them? Do you see the gift that God has given you in any of those things that have been mentioned there? Oh, that we had time to open them up uh, individually. See, we need each other. You need people around you. Other people need you. We are God's gift to each other. It's important. It's extremely important. So how do we prepare? How do we prepare when we come to meet together uh, to worship God and to encourage and build one another up? I've just got three quick little points. Before we come, before we come, pray. Lord, where do you want me to sit today? Not just physically, but spiritually. What attitude do I need to have in my heart when I come together to meet with God's people today? But if we talk about uh, the whole issue of, uh, of a physical place. I wonder when we come in, do we just automatically say, that's my seat over there, uh, and we sit in it? Or uh, if somebody else dares to sit in it, a visitor comes in, do we look at them with uh, those sort of pointy eyes that says, I think you should move. You're in my seat. Or do we look around and find a visitor and go and greet them and offer to sit with them? You know, little things. Uh, preparing the heart for when we, 
when we come together. Maybe it's a little uncomfortable to change places. Maybe it's really important. I wonder whether we would be willing before we come to pray about that. Do we meet and greet newcomers when we see someone we haven't seen before? Look, don't worry about it. If you say, are you new here? And they say, I've been coming for six months. Don't worry about that. <laughs> they won't be offended. They won't be offended. Six years. You were here six years before someone said... Six years. Well, there you go. Do you know, don't worry about that. Say, well, look, I'm really sorry that I haven't noticed you, but here I am now and I'm really welcoming you and uh, wanting to encourage you. You gave her a hug. That would settle it all, Joyce. Uh, during, during the service, uh, as we pray, what, what are we praying this morning? Are we active listeners? Or are we saying, oh no, here we go again, another 45 minutes. <laughs> you know? Are we active listeners? It's a great encouragement to, uh, to a teacher to see people taking notes, by the way. Uh, it really is. And some people need to take notes because I know Robin is like that. She says, I can retain much more if I write notes. You know? Are we active listeners? Are we attentive learners? Lord, may we all be that. May we come saying, Lord, I want you to speak to me this morning. It's a message of encouragement. Uh, may my heart be open to be encouraged in the faith that I have in Jesus. When we sing, do we sing from the heart? Or do we just sing the words that are on the screen? Be an active participant. When you sing the words, think about the words. Yes, this is truth. This is truth for us. We can encourage each other. We might say, I know this truth really well. But there might be someone else, just two people down from you, who needs the encouragement of uh, the ministry of song and the truth that is in the songs. And after the service, you see I'm rushing through, but I've only got one minute left. <laughs> when we finish and when we go out the back for the cup of tea, what do we talk about? Do we talk about the week? Do we talk about the weather? Do you know one of the greatest thrills, just as I was thinking about this, one of the greatest thrills would be to have a congregation when they go out the back and they've got a cup of tea in their hand and they start mingling with each other and mixing with each other. They're actually talking about the walk with God. You know, we've, we've introduced a little activity here in the fellowship where after service, if anyone would value prayer, the invitation is given to come to the front. There'll be two people here, a man and a woman, who would just love to sit with you and fellowship with you and pray with you. You know, people to unburden their heart, to share their life, to be encouraged in the faith. It's, it's not there so that it appears that the church here is a spiritual church or anything. We're interested in the needs of people's lives. We're interested in encouraging one another and building one another up and giving people that opportunity. Do you know, I reckon God would be well pleased if when we've got a cup of tea out the back, that if there was a couple over here and a couple over there and someone over the other side there, they've got a cup of tea in their hand but they're praying, they're talking about encouragement today is the theme of the day, uh, seeking to encourage one another actively to do that uh, would be a wonderful a wonderful thing. I'm not demanding that. Not at all. But I'm suggesting and, and encouraging us to actively seek to grow faith in each other's life, to bless each other's life, to pray with other people. Let's just pray about it. You know, we, we could talk about it till the cows come out. Let me just pray for you. Let's pray together. You know, this whole thing of preparing for this special time each week when the church gathers together. Let's pray. Let's be genuine. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together today. And we thank you that when we come in here, we do not know what's been going on in people's lives this week, but we know that you are available and we know that you love us and we know that you care for us and we know that you desire so much to encourage us in our lives. And uh, Father, we, we could wait for a voice from heaven, but that voice has already come. His name was Jesus. And he has saved us. He has changed us. He has encouraged us by his selfless activity. 
And we are called in Jesus' name to be that, that encouragement to others around about us. For any who don't know you, Father, we would encourage them to put their trust in you. You are there for them. For those, Lord, who are really um, knowing victory and joy, may that be infectious and flow over into the hearts and lives of others around them. Maybe it would be a source of great encouragement. May we be people who pray for one another. That as you prepare our hearts, so in turn, we can, blessed of you, be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name. Amen.